Thank you for listening to Over Leveraged, where we explore the big macro themes affecting investors, economic imbalances, giant geopolitical trends, tail risks and tremors, and everywhere risks are not being fully priced into markets. Remember, trading carries risk and all opinions are provided as general market commentary only. Please do your own research. Our risk warning will follow at the end. This blessed plot, this earth, this realm, this England. Hello, welcome to Over Leveraged, and um, as a frequent guest, uh, co-host almost, I think now, um, Helen Thomas from Blonde Money um, is with us again. Thanks for joining us. Hello, good to be here again. Well, you may be wondering why we have the England flag up. Um, against my better judgment, I was <laughs> dragged into it. This blessed plot, this earth, this realm, this England, um, is Richard II, I think. Famous, um, famous quote about the the nation, um, but it's St George's Day. We're actually filming on St George's Day, twenty third of April, of course. Um, but we're talking about um, two days. Uh, so this podcast, this episode's going out on May the second, um, and today is election day, local election day mm. um, in England, not in Scotland or Northern Ireland. Um, two and a half thousand seats up for grabs across a hundred and seven local authorities. Um, described by one, I think, Tory MP as uh, the Somme without the generals. Oh, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> so I saw that, yeah. They're, Somme they're looking, the generals. They're looking at a pretty pretty bad outcome, I think. Yeah, they couldn't. Uh, well, it's interesting, isn't it? How do you manage expectations when expectations are so low? Uh, yeah. It's one of those slightly surreal situations where any any little hint of anything positive will be seized upon because, as you say, I mean... What, yeah, spin. It'll spin it's anything. It's spin, will yeah. it? It is, but... Yeah. Um, I think what I've been looking at in terms of the expectations management is actually about how it, there's been comments from number 10, less about the uh, local elections specifically, as in mm. the ca- normal councillors that we talk about, but these ma- mayoral elections, yeah. which people who are not geeky about politics <laughs> or don't live in the Midlands. The Westminster bubble. Oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah. The Westminster bubble. The Westminster bubble. Yeah. Uh, if, you, if you don't live in the West Midlands, the Tees Valley, or the Westminster bubble, you may not be aware that there are two mayoral elections up. One in uh, West Midlands, one in Tees Valley. Andy Street. Andy Street. The famous... He's well, been distancing I think of him himself. As, yes, he bit, has been distancing yeah. himself from the party, which is interesting in itself, of course. So, yeah, I think of him as quite a famous... Uh, politician because he was boss of John Lewis for a long time so you know certainly a politician who has done other jobs uh, a job that a brand this is very English I suppose yeah John Lewis you could yeah. be more quintessential it um, is yeah and um, yeah sort of high street you know bellwether type name sort yeah. of classic name on the high street um, I think so there's he, a, a qu- another quote my quotes aren't as good as you Neil but I think it was John <laughs> Betjeman said something like once you're inside Peter Jones at Sloane Square, nothing can go wrong in the world. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's the place you go. You know. We often talk about what happens in yeah. the event of um, the proverbial hitting the fan, or maybe John Lewis is where you camp out. Yeah, um, well, they, they did. I think on the M40 that time there was flooding or ice or something. Oh, they all slept they in that, um, they in slept that big, big John Lewis. It's a good John, John Lewis. It's a good one. The one at High Wycombe, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's a good one, that one. Anyway, but, uh, but yes, any case, uh, the... This is it is a, an int- it will be a very interesting test actually to be fair to number ten briefing about these two mayoral elections because they're trying to say look if we keep one of them it's not a disaster you know mm-hmm. and because they're a known person in their own right mm-hmm. uh, it is possible of course that Andy Street could retain the West Midlands mayoral position yeah. which then the spinners would try and jump on as oh look it's still a result for the Conservative Party even though he has definitely distanced himself from that I mean I think he hasn't even mm-hmm. always had the um, conservative name on his literature that's gone out on the campaign, <laughs> but um, well, you wouldn't know, though, would you? I mean, it's a kind of to- it's become kind of um, toxic. I mean, even um, you know, gen- I think the, the average age of someone switching, bec- moving from Labour to Tory, has gone from something like forty to seventy. That's now, astonishing. Now. You know, that's it the really point is. at which it started. The, the, yeah, I think the I, yeah, under, under was it under Boris? It, yeah, it was thirty eight, thirty nine. Yeah, and, and so you know, even in the southeast of England, yeah. the tracker has gone. In favour right. of Labour, uh, Labour is now above the Tories, and even in the southeast of England, which is obviously the heartland. So. Yeah, but it, but I, it's interesting this point about 
potential toxicity of the brand because obviously we've all seen the polls and it's you know low levels on the national uh, question of in a general election how would you vote that mm-hmm. the Conservatives back down to the lows they had on post Liz Trust. Um, there is a possibility we are entering shy Tory territory um, where some people may not want to even admit to themselves that they might vote that way in a general election. But the scale of it... I think it's it, shy Labour. I think. Oh, do you? <laughs> do you think people would be shy Or Labour? shy Lib Dem or shy, shy Reform, maybe? Well, here's, uh, that's maybe, a really interesting... Yeah. There's a really interesting question here about other parties and um, that actually... Green, Lib Dem, Reform may well pick up a lot more votes. They may not pick up more seats. No. Mm-hmm. And that might do damage to the Labour Party, actually, as much as it... Are they Reform or Projected? So I've got the Electoral Calculus website. Oh, very good. Um, yes. They project Reform on something like 12% of the vote, mm-hmm. no seats. Um, this is in the general election. Yes. This is not the local elections that we're talking about. This is the projected lo- uh, general election. Tories on 23%, but only 90 seats. I mean, 90 seats would be a, a, that's that would be the worst result ever, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting when we talk about translating this into seats because uh, that's always the tricky part, but the Electoral Calculus is a useful website to use for this. Mm-hmm. I mean, the MRP polls, which try and go constituency by constituency, are also good for that. So they, yeah. they poll each constituency and then they try and look at representative factors and aggregate it up and say, well, these kinds of people vote this way, have said they'll vote this way, yeah. so what's it going to manifest at? And the thing is, again, this is a really geeky point, but there are a lot of boundaries that are changing in this general election that's coming up. So your local seat may not be the one mm-hmm. it was because your particular ward is that level that you know may have gone into another constituency. Yeah. There may be a new constituency created so- somehow. Where I live is going to oh, be is a new, it? new constituency. Are you? Yes. Very good. Well, but that, of course, then does make some of these uh, seat predictions a bit trickier. Um, yeah. But also, let's not forget, five years have passed, or will have about just about passed, people have moved. There's been a lot of movement around the country. That would normally happen, but it, of course, was accelerated mm. by the pandemic. So there's also a very interesting question of um, who is in these these yeah. particular districts. So have you seen some, you know, different neighbours pop up? Have you, are you, are you out, you're out of London, aren't you? I am, yeah. Well, actually, we both are, so why, yeah. are, we even, <laughs> why are we even saying it? But I'm just yeah. saying that... Um, that that will will introduce a factor of uncertainty. I mean, the MRP polling should uh, should sort of pick up on that. Yeah, um, but no one no one's talking about. If you mentioned five years ago, no one's mentioning red wall or Brexit. Mm. No, it's, no, no, it's not on the, right. no, it is, no it? longer on the agenda. I mean, there's no no mention of that whatsoever. So uh, you know, people are, are are just you know effectively just sick of you know fourteen years of. Conservative government, and that's what happens. Um, there is an element of that. There's always that element of, uh, of, of governments get very long in the tooth. Mm-hmm. However, we've obviously had a lot of change at the top. So, you know, arguably they've tried out different policies. Um, I, I'm interested in this concept. I was talking to someone the other day about change and the change candidate and people want change. And normally to me that would mean, you know, um, optimism. This is the person who can... Yes, we can, that Obama-level yeah. change person who really is going to bring a difference. Actually, this time around, it's coming from pessimism, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think change simply means somebody competent, somebody that means I can get a doctor's appointment, <laughs> get on the train and there's no strikes, you know, potholes. Yeah. Let's not even talk about the potholes. Potholes. potholes will come up a lot in these local elections. Yeah, and that's... A, it's the, actually a massive issue. That's the thing about trying to read the local elections against you know, as a proxy for the yeah. t- general election can be quite tricky because there are so many local issues that, that, that dominate. Yeah. Um, but by and large, we think Tories are going to do badly. Yeah. And what that could mean for... And as you said, it'll sound Mr. like Sunak. big numbers because you said, two, you know, 2,500 seats, so... And maybe 500, they think, may, Tories are thinking maybe they'll lose 500. Yeah. Um, which would be... So, you know, yeah, it sounds a big number. It could lot, easily you know, be. Oh, sorry, I want to just pick up on those mayoral uh, points of West Midlands and Tees mm. Valley, which is that I think part of the reason Number 10 is grabbing them is because they sound red wall, and it yeah. slightly tries to say, oh, if we retain those, then maybe we can have a yeah. chance of keeping it. And but five, you, you, you can set one mayor against 500 seats, and in people's minds, it's very hard to distinguish yeah. what that meant, means. Yes, what does that exactly so what does that actually mean? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. I, how to, and then, of course, there's turnout. I mean, 
Uh, <laughs> I feel quite confident in predicting, although you've said very, very sensibly you've lifted the veil and we're not recording this on the day itself, but it will go out on the day itself. Mm -hmm. I feel quite confident to say, I bet it's raining and yeah. it's cold <laughs> <laughs> because it has been for so long. Yeah. Uh, that might affect turnout. I mean, I, I mean, who's going to bother? Well, what's interesting in these local elections is it probably motivates the people that want to give the government a bloody nose. So you may get more turnout from yeah. those against you. But you do also, I guess, more likely to get the older, more locally, uh, you know, yeah, the people activists. that are active in the community yes, type that's people a fair point. who who, who know yeah. who know their local councillors who may yeah. who may have stood themselves or are standing who may well be who are party activists. Well, this brings us, I think, to what what we're getting at here, and which is what does it mean more broadly about the election? Because you the know, party activist is key, actually. In what way? Well. When you talk about 90 seats, and mm -hmm. there's been that is in line with the MRP polling, which has been there's one that said around 90 seats, one that said 130. I mean, whatever. It's a long way down from the, well, it was 350 the Conservatives yeah. had. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's an extinction level event potentially now this general election. Yeah. So that changes the calculation. It's not even can we defend our seats. It's can we exist as a party mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because. When you go to that level of loss, well, yeah. for a start, you start. You, you may not even be, you'll just about be the official opposition, but, I mean, let's say the Liberal Democrats are on... 50. 50. S&P on 28, that's the electoral calculus, Labour mm. on 458. Yeah. I mean, 97, that would make knock 97 into, that would oh. look like a, a close run thing. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, well, exactly. And as much as people might like to say, oh, but there's no enthusiasm for Keir Starmer and it's not like Blair in 97. Well, there's not. And there, is, there isn't. There isn't. <laughs> and actually, the, what's interesting uh, when you start to look at numbers like that is um, the opposition comes from within your own party. Yeah. That becomes more of an issue because there's going to be mm -hmm. Labour MPs who are just so excited they've got this big mandate and this big majority. Hey, why don't we go and do this that we've always wanted to do? Well, it goes to something I think we discussed in a previous episode the, the idea that maybe Rachel Reeves as the Chancellor could be quite quite um, left wing and very um what's the word radical radical could Absolutely. be radical could, could be, be radical and with change. a majority of you know 300 <laughs> and, and change you could afford oh, to be radical do all sorts exactly so who knows what's going to happen uh, if, yeah if it, and happens. actually by the way I do think that some of these numbers might in themselves as the date nears actually motivate some people who are a bit on the fence about whether yeah. to vote for Labour or not, because I don't think the British public generally like big, big majorities. I know, I know they'd like strong and stable government, and I know that that brilliant phrase from David mm. Cameron mm -hmm. has not lasted very well. Uh, but I think there is an element of, oh, hang on a minute, it would feel a bit... And it, it, there's always that question mark uneasy. of talking too much and, and extrapolating too much from before the campaign has started, because the campaign yes. can change a lot. Oh, I, I mean, mean, look at what we've had. I mean, we've had... Um, well, I mean, the Theresa May manifesto yeah. totally changed the course of that campaign. There's been election campaigns where there's been, unfortunately, you know, terrorist incidents or the Joe Cox murder and things like that. I mean, mm -hmm. just terrible mm -hmm. things can obviously happen. Um, and, 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 you know, the Ed Miliband bacon sandwich moments, there's always yeah, funny little I, moments that can change things. And, you know, the death of the Conservative Party has been... Proclaim, you know, been yeah. announced yeah. before many, William many Hague in '97. Yeah. It, wasn't, it was looking like Bad. It was teetering. Um, but then it, it's always it's a great survivor. Exactly. It's not I a mean, dinosaur. It's a it's yeah. a apex predator or maybe not maybe they're the ones that die out i don't know <laughs> no it's, you're right it's, it's, a the, it's a great survivor it's, it's, the it's the cockroach that's that's <laughs> okay we'll we'll give you that one but, but that's right and that's where actually right where we're recording now is such a key moment for the party because it's getting the party activists out it's getting a message on the doorstep where you, they'll say come on you might think rishi sunak's this that and the other i mean oh, there's all these mm -hmm. you know people think Potentially, he's out of touch, or no, 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 I know, a bill billionaire, multi million, multi -million billionaire, billionaire. <laughs> yeah. uh, or, or you know, with his uh, short trousers and uh, um, yeah. Adidas trainers. I've, I've lost track. Yeah, he's of, never, of he's what never he's supposed to wear. Never got out of short trousers. Uh, <laughs> that's what my uh, mother-in-law always says about him. But things like that matter, actually, to people. But um, but you've got to get the party activists motivated to actually get out and do the work. It is yeah. a ground campaign still. I know we all think it's lived online, but it's definitely not lived on Twitter. I mean, most people don't really no, well, uh, live on there. Really. Especially not in the last, I think, since the change with Musk. And oh, so on. It's, yes. As, yeah. as someone in the office said to me, it's a, but Twitter's a cesspit. <laughs> And I said, yes, but it's my kind of cesspit. <laughs> <laughs> Do 
like, oh, that's Which just goes to the heart of like the polarization yeah. of you know, yeah, that's true. People, actually, people sort of talk to other people. That they, but they but know this is it. where I want to bring up that the key thing about these local elections is that if it is as bad as we all expect, then it's extremely hard for Rishi Sudak to actually lead the party into the election. So It's very hard for him to keep going mm -hmm. because then by that point he'll have had these local elections, there'll have been all the by-election defeats, there will have been all the sleazy scandals of MPs who've had to resign to force the by-elections and despite the, income, sorry, the national insurance tax cuts, despite inflation coming down, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he is at his lowest net approval rating ever and the yeah. party's back down at the lows. So, you know, momentum is everything in politics. It's extremely hard to turn that around. And, it, and, and basically, it's, it's getting to the point now where he, it's out of his hands. So the logical next step, if it's really that bad, is, you know, Tory party's never been afraid of shooting its generals. That's it, exactly. Um, you know, Soviet style when things don't go well, <laughs> and and that's maybe what we're going to look yes, at. Yes, I think that's I think that that is what uh, investors should really be looking at as in the wake of of these local election results. Is that mm -hmm. next week, the week after these election results, could be the moment where Rishi Sunak calls the election or sets the date, probably early July. Need about so you, five weeks to get to an election campaign, and they want to do right. it before school holidays. Right, because you, cause you want, yes, you don't want everyone, all the middle class voters to be off. In, well, uh, no, well, do you? I mean, that's actually I an interesting know. question. Well, yeah. Part of it is just part of the me mechanics Mechanic, of it, of yeah. the whole government going off on holiday. And, and then the question is, does he step aside and let someone else lead the campaign? Mm -hmm. Because the problem is, we know that... He has internal opposition. Our analysis, what we do at Blonde Money, is we go through every single MP, we give them Rishi ratings, mm -hmm. we do it on a quantitative basis. We've done something called cluster analysis, which one of our amazing analysts came to us with and I didn't know about, but it's a way of clustering MPs with similar characteristics to see how they'll vote. And there is a, a diehard group of them. Right. Why are you laughing now? Well, I just think of cluster. It, oh, yeah. it, it means you think of another, yeah, another expression. Another expression. We for can't what, use for that the on, this, on Tory this podcast. party right now. <laughs> then, then it'll get it'll get it'll get marked as explicit, and we can't do that. Yeah. But yeah, so so in any case, we know that there's on that analysis. There's 39 diehard anti Rishi want to change the leader. Mm -hmm. um, our broader Rishi ratings suggest uh, at least 50. We know the numbers. I think it's now 52 that you need to trigger right. in a confidence vote, and think of how damaging the actual no confidence vote would be even if he were to win it which is at yeah, best 50 50 with a few months to go before a general election yeah. has to be called yes it's getting into territory where it's you can't just shrug it off and say well i've survived the vote and i'm gonna carry well, on the worst um, part is you'll know exactly the number of people against you mm -hmm. and recently there was a vote on uh, banning the sale of cigarettes to people born after 2009. Yeah. It went through, but only with opposition votes. Now, it was a free vote for every Conservative MP, so they didn't whip it, so effectively people could vote as they wished. Mm -hmm. um, and half of his MPs either abstained or voted against. Yeah. Now, some of the abstentions come from people who are you know, off sick or paired with someone else, etc. But, you, but yeah. the point being, around half of his own yeah. MPs didn't back it. So... Or maybe there's a few Tory MPs who still believe in liberty. Who well, knows? <laughs> and not locking people well, up for their own good. <laughs> there's the, what was it? No, to be, what, what was the argument against that? Oh, it's uh, the greatest act of liberty is to keep people healthy or something. I think that was oh, right. the spin that the health minister tried to put on it. But yeah. anyway, the upshot being here that the, an actual no-confidence vote would be extremely damaging to Rishi Sunak, to the party, could make it a lot worse. Obviously, if he loses, which is, we think, likely... Um, then, then you've got into a further mess of yeah. time, and you're losing time. And the, uh, and the party itself, the people who care about the party, the so-called men in the grey suits, mm. they do exist. Mm -hmm. um, will already have the whiskey and revol revolver in <laughs> in Downing Street, yeah. ready for Rishi to to look at his own options. I mean, he's got to think about his legacy. Yeah, you know, what's he going to do next, and um, does he want to be? It's not just the man who presided over, you know, got dealt a bad hand and it wasn't a very good election result. He could end up going down in history as the man who killed the Conservative Party. Yeah. 
do you accept the defeat and leave him in charge to take all the blame and then you can cr- find a new leader well, after the so defeat? Well, this so is, this is the question about the numbers because you talk about 90 seats or mm. wherever we're up to. Then it depends who they are, who yeah. kept their seat. Now, Well, uh, Lord Cameron, I mean, he's... He's well, safe. you could, you could have, yes, I mean, you, you could have <laughs> Rishi step aside and put Lord Cameron in yeah. as a, a PM who just is there simply for five weeks to run an election campaign. Mm-hmm. Um, but you, but yes, after the election, who's going to keep their seat? Well, people keep talking about Kemi Badenoch talking her up because she does actually have a very, very large majority already. So even if that is c- cut down severely, mm. she's got a better chance than most. Yeah. Um, Liz Truss, her seat. <laughs> actually has <laughs> that she has a large majority um now here's the funny thing so penny mordant has much lower majority but if you look back at that seat portsmouth that if you look at 97 when labor won mm. labor only won it with 2000 i think or 3000 majority so mm-hmm. it's a it's just a seat that doesn't have a big majority yeah, it's just sure. not one of those, it's just a very mixed kind of a seat sure. so um there's a, there's a lot to play for here in terms of not quite knowing of the potentially 90 people left, which one of them is the leader, and then mm. are they going to take the party in the direction you want? And that is the remember, tricky part. Remember, the members want Liz Truss. They do. What about reform? What if reform mm. don't win any seats but win 4 million or 5 million votes? And, and yeah. it turns out, you know, they prevented the Tories potentially from winning another mm-hmm. 50 or 100 seats. Then there'll be the argument, oh, well, we should embrace their platform. Yeah. There could even be an argument where there's almost a reverse takeover and yeah. so reform sort of envelops what's left of the Conservative Party. And that pushes the Conservative Party more to the, I guess, to the right. To the right, exactly. Yeah. Is the party going to survive and what's going to be left of it? And is it going to be strong enough to have its own identity? And that's why you're getting so many internal opponents who back different agendas. They're kind of agitated for change, but they're not yet ready to stick the knife yeah. in. But the party, the actual yeah. party itself, and the, you know these men in the grey suits, um, will need to have a campaign team, the top team in the cabinet, that is going to get as many seats as possible, basically, or keep as yeah. many seats as possible. Defend the position. Term, it's got to yeah. be a... Dif- yes. But, but, I mean, it sounds like it's, it's a more uh, fractured um, political landscape for a long time to come. Oh, that's, that, that's that a given. we've been used to. You know, that, ever since Brexit, yeah. it's broke. It's it's yes. it's the, it was a hand grenade in the room. Yeah, that, and it's blown yeah. up the electorate into yeah. different groups. And then COVID came along, and then uh, people went into: Do they want? Do they, you know, libertarianism? They want more freedom for the individual, or mm-hmm. do they believe Parliament is supreme and not sort of more authoritarian view? Um, and actually, I should say that's going to be a problem for the Labour Party. Yeah. And actually, it's going to persist probably for another decade because these sorts of Explosions mm-hmm. take a long time to re-coalesce. Yeah. So, so this I find it slightly odd that anyone expects a return to the centre because the electorate isn't in the centre. No. It's all over the place, mm-hmm. and it's going to have to experiment with what either you know what either extreme is saying before kind of re-coalescing yeah. around what the future of the country should be, and that doesn't happen overnight. By the way, it's not just happening in the UK. No, of course not. No. This is happening this is, all this over is this the world. This theme that we've explored before. Yeah. And, uh, Absolutely. Yeah. But overnight, we might have some election results. Yes. To chew over. To um, chew over. So um, that's going to be very interesting to see just how badly the Conservative Party does. You're not supposed to do it with a smile, Neil. No, you? well, I, I'm, um, I'm agnostic, um, politically agnostic. Um, I'm all over the place as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, It'll but, certainly be interesting because we, we will actually yeah. at least get some data points, won't yeah, we? Yeah, and we might actually start to get some movement on, in terms of leadership, in terms yeah. of a yes. general, yeah, a, a, we, a date at a date, a general exactly. election, which will be the exciting thing. And we'll, we'll come yes. back to this topic again. Absolutely. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you, Helen. Thank you, Neil. Um, Thanks for listening to Overleveraged. Uh, Do follow us um, wherever you get your podcasts on Spotify, Apple, uh, YouTube, wherever uh, you happen to listen. Thanks for listening. Be the first to listen to Overleveraged by following the Overleveraged podcast directly on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. That way you can listen to our content as soon as it drops every Thursday. Thank you for listening. Remember, all opinions, news, research, analysis, prices or other information is provided as general market commentary, not as investment advice, and all potential results discussed are not guaranteed to be achieved. The information may have been derived from publicly available sources, company reports, personal research or surveys. 
Past performance is not indicative of future performance. Trading carries risk of capital loss, and the service is available to professional clients only. 